The disturbing video of George Floyd is leading to many difficult conversations about race for families across the country. Experts say these talks are necessary and need to take place early and more often. It's important for families of all ethnicities to determine when to talk about race. And Candace Campo spoke with Dr. Kimberly Rank over Zoom, a child trauma expert and professor at the University of Central Florida on how to start the conversation and where to take it from there. Parents need to put aside their worries about having the exact right words and just start the conversation and follow their child's lead. I mean, certainly how you start and what you say is going to vary depending on the age of the child, but even just inquiring as to what they've heard or what they've overheard is happening in the world today and what worries they might have about that or what, what concerns they might have about that is, is just a fine place to start. I mean, I remember looking online, it was saying, you know, from the age of, you know, two, you can start talking to children about this. They see the differences in color. They see the differences in, 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 in other ways. I mean, do you wait for them to start noticing those things or is this something that, you know, you should be bringing up to them? I think it's something that you should be embedding in how you live your life. Even the books that you pick to read, you should make sure as a parent that they reflect the diversity that is true of our society and have a conversation and provide the words that kids need to categorize people, to, to say this person has brown skin, this person has black skin, this person has peach skin. You know, wow, isn't it great that we're all so different, but we all can be together. What is that like? and really provide an open forum for those kinds of questions to be explored. And then when the more difficult questions come up, parents have an avenue that's already open to start to discuss those things. I mean, how young would you say this, this conversation should be, should be kind of starting? From the beginning of life. I mean, we know that even infants tend to look more at people who match their caregivers and so if they have an African-American caregiver, they're going to look more closely at people who are dark skin. If they have a Caucasian caregiver, they're going to look more closely at people who have light skin. So we know from the beginning of life that this is something that children notice. And so it should just be part of how we live our lives. Our children see us as the role model for how to do things. And so if we are open to people who are different than us, our children are gonna be open to people who are different than us. If we are demonstrating anxiety or nervousness of some kind, children are gonna read that in our demeanor and they're gonna think that that's the way to do it. So I think it really does start with parents really doing a good job of, of doing some soul searching, really being honest with themselves about where their struggles are and really working hard to address the biases that they have and how they go about their life knowing that their children are watching them. They're watching them to be the role model for how to do things in a diverse society. Dr. Rank also says it's possible you might not know the answer to every question that comes up, and that's okay. You can turn the conversation into a learning experience for everyone. She recommends doing information seeking together as a family, especially for parents with older children, and taking a historical look at race relations and how they've shifted over time in our country and the world. Books can also help families navigate those difficult issues.